so I mentioned some important ship construction improvements. Let's take a little closer look at that. The Basques in particular needed to go into much deeper water to get into their new whaling territory. This required stronger hulls, and one of the big problems with ancient shipbuilding was they would take the planks and they would put them flush against each other, and then you had really weak joints where those planks were joined. Uh, there was a new construction method that was first pioneered by the Basques. Uh, the oldest sources I've found say somewhere in the 6th century AD. And this is what would become clinker construction, which you would see in just about all Viking ships as well. Vikings, by the way, being a sort of placeholder name for the, the Norse of the North, the, the Danes, the people from Norway and Sweden, modern times. So just to kind of wrap up our look at the Age of Sail and how and why that came to be, I want to look at Spain and the Spanish Galleon. These were very large trading ships that could cross the Pacific and the Atlantic. They often did. They came about for various reasons. The Basques and the Danes didn't really have the population or the wealth or even the trade to be able to fund huge ships that they could sail around. And as Spain settled and the nations of Castile and Aragon came to rule much of the land that came to be Spain, they began to have much more reason to invest in projects like this. Previously, the West had contact with the Silk Road and with the trade routes east, and that was where more of the, most of their efforts in trading were focused. Venice was very much focused in the east, and while that trade was available, they did very well and prospered, but with the rise of the Ottomans, those routes were closed, and they couldn't really go east anymore with any sort of safety. So Spain and Portugal, poised at the corner of Europe, became the newest contact points for new trade routes. If trade couldn't be pushed east, it would have to be pushed west. Spain had a long history of sailing enterprise. They had the clinker ships, they had their whalers, and with the new risk of losing all sorts of trade that had been in Western Europe for 1,000, 2,000 years, they really needed to find some way to reconnect and to go back to the spice and the finer goods that they were importing that they really wanted. So Spanish and Danish naval innovation was supported by much larger states that had much larger budgets than the previous smaller more tribal groups had, even in their own innovative ways. And one of the major problems with any ship sailing is maintenance. Even today, maintenance on large ships is very important, uh, especially because when you're out in the middle of the ocean, you can't really do any maintenance. You have to make sure you're in tip-top shape before you go out. Once a ship was launched, it became very difficult especially to fix the keel and the bottom of the boat and prohibitively so for much larger vessels. So once these larger vessels started to come about, you not only had to invest all of the money in building these ships, you had to invest all of the money in expanding certain cities and districts and making armories and dry docks and it was a very big process for people who didn't know that there was any real reason to invest in them. You have to remember, in 1490, when the Spanish crown was sending out their galleons looking for new places to trade because they could no longer trade with the east, they didn't know where they were going. They didn't know if there was anything out there. They were sort of blindly striking out, hoping to find something. This was around the time that England sailed north and thought that they could find a route east and ended up finding Arkhangelsk in Russia, which is still to this day a major trading port during the summertime.